Hello everyone and welcome to this new Auth Chat 2019 course. It has been a long time since my last video. I have purchased a new computer and a microphone, so hopefully we'll see an improvement in quality this season. So today I'll be introducing you to the software. In order to understand the software, we need to be able to understand the interface. So today I'll be showing you the following tools and concepts. Command, pan, zoom and zoom extends, grid, orth mode, polar tracking, snap mode, and the selection tool. So I'll open up my AutoCAD. So this is what we call model space, which is where you model. Um, that's my Y and X axis. That's my zero origin point. Um, here you can see your tool menu. So drawing tools are here under draw. Modify tools are here. Annotation, layers, block, properties, groups, utilities, clipboard and view. Um, we will go through all of this in the following videos more into detail. Today I'll be just focusing on the interface. Here is our command bar. Um, here is another bar with more utilities that allow you to switch from model space to paper space, your grid mode, snaps, etc. I will be going through all of this in this video. Um, so to start with, what makes AutoCAD special? Probably the use of commands. So you can apply a command to execute any of the tools. So, for instance, I can either click on line in order to draw a line. So I'll click on line. And now AutoCAD will always specify what input is requiring from you. So it's asking us to specify our first point. We can either do a single left click anywhere to start drawing our line or we can type in the coordinates. So if we type in zero, comma, zero, our start point is so starting at the origin. So what I wanted to explain with this is that you don't necessarily need to go to the menu and click on line. You can also type in the word line and hit enter, and AutoCAD will execute the command line. Alternatively, you do not need to type in the whole word line. You can just type in the shortcut, which is L in this case. And as you can see in the menu, when you type in L, you can see that the command line is in brackets. Press enter and it will execute the command. You can also use the same principle for circle. You can either type in the word circle or type in C. And as you can see, the command comes up. So I'll type in C, press enter, specify the center point, specify radi radius. Um, so that's how you execute commands. Now, let's say if you wish to zoom in and out, you can, uh, you can just use your, your mouse wheel. Zoom in and out. If if you're very far away and you don't know exactly where your drawing is, you can go to this uh, menu bar here and go on zoom extent, and then that will um, zoom on whatever you have drawn. Alternatively, there is a shortcut to apply zoom extent, which is double click on your mouse wheel. So when you double click, if by any chance um, you can't find your drawing because you sketched somewhere far from the origin and you can't see where your drawing is, double click on your mouse wheel and it will execute zoom extent. Okay, so the next tool that we need to understand is the pan command. You can either type in pan, you can either go to the navigation bar and click here and the hand symbol for pan. And now you're able to 
to pan in your drawing so you can move around more ease. Um, anytime, if you wish to exit a command, either press enter or press escape. So when I press escape, now I've just exit pan. If it's too much effort to click on pan all the time, you would most likely only be doing this if you are working on a laptop and you don't have a mouse. But I have a mouse, so just by keeping, just by pressing the mouse wheel, you can apply pan temporarily. So it makes things a lot easier. Okay, so having understood that, the next thing that I'll be showing you is all the tools that we find in this bar. That's your command bar, by the way. You do not need to use it. Any every time you type in, it comes up in the in the main screen. But you can always use your command bar here as well if you need to, or you can close it alternatively. Okay, so this is our grid. So each one of these little squares are ten mil by ten mil. So that's fifty mil. That's 100 mil, 150, 200, and so on. So you do not necessarily need this grid because, as you can see, when you draw a line, you can already see the actual dimension and you can type it in. So it's not always useful. It's, it's a matter of personal preference. So if you wish to turn it off, just either hit that seven or click here and you will be able to turn on and off your grid. The next thing to to go through is snap mode. So whenever I'm drawing a line, as you can see, if I want if my line if I wanted to draw a line that is 30 mil, it's quite hard to get the number spot on by moving the mouse. I would have to type it in otherwise. We won't hit number 30 exactly to four decimal places. So if we go here, that's our snap mode. If I now click there to activate it, when I draw a line, I'll click here. So right now it moves um one mil every time I move it. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see it quick easier. So it jumps every time I move the mouse to the right, to the left, or in any direction, it jumps exactly one millimeter. So most likely in your case, it will be set up by default um ten mil. So if you go and if you expand the tab and click on snap settings, as I did, you will see this menu. So it'll probably be set up to 10. One centimeter, which is most likely to be the case because AutoCAD is mainly used in architecture. So you'll be working in, in centimeters rather than millimeters. If you're going to be working in engineering, I suggest that you change your settings to one mil. So you may be wondering, oh, what if I want to work to 0.5 of a mil? Then you can just set it up to 0.5 of a mil if you wish. Or you can just type in, um, if you want to, as you can see, it's jumping from 30 to 31. If you want to make an exception, just type in 30.5 and that will do the job. Just another thing, if you wish to delete an item, just click on it to highlight it and press delete on your keypad. The next concept that I will be explaining you in this video is our 
ortho mode and polar track here. So whenever I draw a line, as you can see, I can only draw lines at right angles, 90 degree angles. That is because our ortho mode is turned on. So if I want to turn it off, now I can draw lines in any direction. So normally I would have it on by default, simply because otherwise it's really easy to make mistakes. You may think that your line is going straight, which it will be hard to tell by eye. So now if I turn on my ortho mode and draw a real, a real straight line, Now you can see that the line that we first drew, that by eye seemed to be straight, now it's, we can see that it's off. So very important. I highly recommend it to have it on. Um, the next one, polar tracking. Let's say that we didn't want to draw at right angles and that instead um, we also wanted some angles in between. So if I click under this tab, 1980 to 70 that's exactly the same as um what we saw earlier the only difference is that we have the freedom to draw in any direction but at the same time autocad snaps in the zero direction 90 direction and so on so you can set it for instance to to snap at every 45 degrees. Now when I draw a line, it snaps horizontally, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135. If you wish to do it every 30 degrees, then you can do every 30, 23, 18, 15, 10, 5. You can go on tracking settings, um, set additional angles and even set one degree, 0.5 of a degree if you wish. Okay, so let's turn our polar tracking off. You can turn it on and off by clicking here. Um, this is our snapping reference line and object snaps. We will be seeing this in the following video. So the next thing that I will be showing you is how to use the selection tool. So I'm going to draw a circle, for instance. By the way, if you press Enter, AutoCAD will execute the latest command you used. So when I press Enter, AutoCAD executes the circle command. If you draw a line, As I said earlier, in order to exit, to exit the command, hit escape or press enter or right click and click on enter. Now when I press enter again, it's repeating the line command. So I'll draw more circles. Okay, so I will be showing you now how to select and deselect items. So if you want to select items individually, you just have to do a single left click on top of the object and AutoCAD will select it. You don't have to hold control or anything. AutoCAD keeps the selection for you. If you wish to manually deselect one of the items, you just have to hold shift. So when you hold shift, that allows you to select that individual selection. As you can see, the sign is now plus when I hold shift on top of a selected object, it goes to minus. Um, anyway, we may want to select several objects at once instead of clicking the objects individually. 
Um, I'll left. I'll do. I'll apply a single left click here. So if I move my cursor to the right, the selection tool is blue. If I go to the right, the select. Sorry, to the left, the selection tool is green. So what does this mean? I will be showing you now. If any object goes under your green selection tool, it's already highlighted. However, with the blue selection tool, it doesn't happen because in order to select an object with the blue selection tool, your object must be covered by the entire area, as you can see. And now you may think, oh, what's that useful for? So let's say if we want to select um, these um, four circles, we may just swipe like that, select them, and hit delete. However, you may only want to delete, I don't know, these um, two circles or three circles, it's three for instance. Um, it will be impossible to apply that with the green selection tool because it's interfering with the others. So we can just use our blue selection tool in this manner to select them. So it's particularly helpful when you have too many things going on in, in a drawing and you want to select certain objects quickly without interfering with others. Alternatively, if instead of um, applying a single left click, if you keep holding the mouse, you can you have a free drawing form. So again, same principle. If you go to the right blue selection tool, if you go to the left green selection tool. So I don't normally tend to use the free from one. I normally just use the square one. But if you're comfortable with it, why not? So this will be it for this introduction video. I will be doing a recap of on what we went through. So we've seen commands, pan, zoom and zoom extends, grid, ortho mode, polar tracking, snap mode, and the selection tool. So that's enough to get started. We'll be going into more depth in the following video. So this will be it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.